In uh, the back of the Art of Bob Drumming, I list five albums that are really important to, to listen to, to check out some of the great drummers from that era, Max Roach, Art Blakey, Roy Haynes, etc. And it's, it's interesting to hear the drummers that preceded them to hear what the evolution was to, and to recognize the innovation of someone like Max Roach, for example. And so I would suggest checking out Gene Krupa. He was like the preeminent swing drummer. And the record that, that introduced me to him was actually the soundtrack to the movie, The Gene Krupa Story. And I think that, that uh, hearing the way he was an accompanist and a soloist, and then comparing that, let's say, to a Max Roach record, um, you'll hear a big difference in the vocabulary that they use and the kind of fluidity they have around the instrument, and especially the integration of the bass drum into all the melodic and timekeeping uh, playing. We used to they used to say, well, you want to think of the bass drum like a third hand. And drummers Max Roach, Kenny Clark, Art Blakey were the first ones to really embrace this idea of the bass drum like a third hand. The, the other great pre-bebop pre drummer to check out is Joe Jones, also known as Papa Joe Jones, to separate himself from Philly Joe Jones, who was a younger drummer and a burning bebop player, but the, the records of Count Basie with Joe Jones, spelled J-O, actually his name was Jonathan, and he had a beautiful swing feel that uh, really influenced the bebop drummers, and then they began to incorporate the snare drum and bass drum in a, in a conversational way. And you can find exercises to to cultivate those skills and to get a sense of what kind of balance, what kind of proportion you want to have between snare drum and bass drum uh, activity in the art of bop drumming. And I also did a series of lessons for online lessons TV where I expand on some of these ideas and that's a good source to check out as well.